today is some merriments and enjoyments. I've had to clear the desk. Usually we have the iMac G3 sitting at the back there, but I've had to clear it for this huge beast, which is the IBM 6746 typewriter. Uh, yeah, this is a beast. Uh, it weighs an absolute ton and it is massive. I'm just going to get the standard unit of measurement for a key club, which is a Sega Mega Drive number one. And as you can see, it is almost two Mega Drives wide and yeah, two and a half Mega Drives deep. That is one big ass machine. This dates, from what we can tell, there's not much history on these online, uh, but we believe, there's just stickers inside, uh, it dates from 1984. There is a service sticker inside, well, underneath the keyboard, from 1987. One of the standout features that many people don't realise that this has. Yep, the same mechanical keyboard is the IBM 5150, the Model F keyboard. Uh, so let's have a look at the uh, the features of this thing, this beast, how we'll see it running. But first of all, we're gonna have a quick look around it. Enjoy. Right, first of all, is this? Ah, ah, lovely mechanical keyboard. Uh, there's no big surprise here. You've got functions that you'd expect on a typewriter, like margin release, so you can go outside the margins. You can set the position of the left margin, position of the right margin. The tab set sets how far a tab goes, or you can set extra tabs. If you don't know what a tab is, don't do typewriters, so bug you. <laughs> uh, and tab clear. There's the tab button itself. Yep, nothing unusual there. Uh, not sure what language is. Not entirely sure. Uh, but as I'm assuming this one activates these keys, which allow you to under, uh, underline, backspace, and there's also a button here. That's delete. That allows you to delete uh, the last character or the last line, actually, up to the last line on this one, because it's semi-word processor. This is before digital displays and all that on typewriters, but there we go. Got the line thing there. I'm going to have to look at that, because it's a while since I've used this, so I uh, don't know what that is. Is I've forgotten to be honest. You've got paper up, paper down, micro up, which allows you doesn't lift up a micro computer. No, it doesn't do that. It allows you to move the paper up very slightly. I'll demonstrate these in a moment. Micro down and line space. And whoops, looking the keyboard. And the display here, which shows you all the different measurements. Above that, we have where the paper goes. So you've got this guideline here, so your paper can sit up against that. This can lift up, <coughs> excuse me, to allow you access to the main compartment here. Uh, and finally, this lifts up to allow you access to this huge bay where if I push it slightly, you'll see this enormous cartridge. There we go. And this contains, as you can see, both black ribbon and the delete. Now this machine was actually up to in use up to about three years ago and you can still get the parts for it now. That ribbon looks like it runs weird and it's actually a, a daisy print, daisy wheel print. It actually moves the wheel back here which has got all the preset characters on and that moves, that hits and I'll probably show you that in slow motion if I can. Right, okay, time to look at the other sides of this machine, but I'm going to have to move it before I bring the camera back in, because it's massive. I'll be right back. Right, here's the back, and uh, that's really boring, I hear you say. And yes, I would agree with you. You've got your, this moves the uh, rolling pin forward so you can get paper in. Oh, this one does. Oh, yeah, that moves the rolling pin forward. That releases paper so you can just move it freely. The interesting thing back here is this comms port, which is hidden. He says, struggling. 
Come on. Ah. Under here. This allowed you to connect this up as a printer to a PC. So yes, it's actually used this as a printer. Also has an interface for a monitor. And if you connected this to the monitor, you could actually use this as a full word processor. I believe the software is all built in and just connect up the appropriate monitor, which I don't have, and show you pictures of it. And that would allow full word processing. The only other thing of note on the back is this power switch. I'll show you this main switch in a second. Okay, we are on the top and those of you who know IBM computers from this period will recognize this big ass power switch. So yeah, it's exactly the same as on the computers of the period. Love it, wonderful. I'm just sitting here all day just doing that. Oh, I'm gonna shatter it. I'm gonna shatter it. But anyway, yes, we need to see this thing going. So let's get it back around. Load some paper up. Right, I am back and uh, let's load this up with some uh, papa. So, well, since I've used it, so gotta plug it in first. Fail. Okay, I'm back and this time I've come prepared. I've actually plugged it in. But this time I've actually raised the front because what it does runs through its checks when you switch it on. So if I put the camera there, and then I hit this big power switch. Uh, uh. Shall we do that again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Let's put it over there this time. All right, go. Oh, I've just geeked. Yes, that is wonderful. And you can see, well, here, this product setup date label, uh, which doesn't tell you anything. Um, because the lights are shining, you can't really see much up there, but there we go. It says 93 on this, 28th of the 3rd, 93. Although we've got a 1984 date in the bottom and a 1987 date on the keyboard. Um, so, yeah, a lot of IBM strangeness going on there, I suspect. But... Let's position this camera better and uh, let's see this thing take some paper. All right, okay, here we go. So let's put some uh, paper in as a machine and then all we do is do that and it feeds through. Excellent. And there it is in the pit, ready to go. Although a little bit caught on the thing now. So if I do micro up, you will see that it feeds extremely slow. And we can do the paper up, which feeds more, or continuously feeds if you hold it down. Uh, the margins we know about. Let's uh, see this thing type. So if I bring the camera in, we can see it going. Okay. Okay, here we go. My name is Okay, so here we go. My name is Retro Gamer PX and here I am. Oops. Ah, made a mistake. So if I uh, go space, I don't know if I remember that one because, oh yeah, there you go. And I am here testing the IBM 6746 typewriter, which, which doesn't have its margin set right, <laughs> is a massive retro Right here, uh, hit the end. Doesn't matter about that, it'll just wipe off. It seems to have had its margins completely reset. So if I uh, go, uh, yeah, how do we do this? Margin release, backspace. 
there we go, I can go to there, I can set my left margin, I can then uh, space it, go to the right, set the right margin. Right, paper up, paper down, there we go. So, let's try this again, now that I have sorted the margins out. This typewriter is bloody massive and I still don't have a right margin. It's gone to the left margin, it hasn't set the uh, right margin, but there we go, you get the idea. So what's this language thing do? So if I, do, 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 if I zoom out and I press uh, code language G H Okay, if I press Control C T R Alright, okay. It's gonna type Ah, I think that's center, so sort of centers it. Sort of centered it. Yeah. Not really. So yeah, that's the uh, the keyboard itself, and you can see it deletes, it raises the ribbon, and deletes. Uh, other than that, these machines were actually, yeah, their life was extended uh, because in typewriting, if you wanted a copy of something uh, back when you used typewriters, you'd carbon paper, and these smack against the paper, so they're ideal for doing carbon copies which is exactly what this was used up to about three years ago if you want one of these these days you're going to be forking out a lot of money on ebay yeah because they are they do go for quite a few pennies but that's the ibm 6746 which weighs a bloody ton you can actually hear if you listen carefully enough you can hear the uh, transformer going or possibly not but there we go. Uh, you've got different spaces as well, uh, different line spaces, but yeah, we've covered all that. So there we go. It's a, a simple machine, but it's a tank and it's a classic. But I've just had a thought. Yeah, I messed this bit of the video up. What happens if you want to type in a different font on a machine like this? Well... IBM got you covered because this box contains the IBM fonts you just open this bad boy up just he says there is a hinge there I see yeah there we go and inside are your reels I love this box it's great isn't it and you've got different fonts there we go courier 10p that doesn't mean it costs 10p that means yeah size 10 uh, but it says on them here yeah there you go courier 12 reorder number uh light italic on that one we got letter gothic and prestige 15 so let's try prestige 15 so what do we do well what we do we get grab the machine open it up and you simply pull out the old cartridge Pull that back, pull out the cartridge, which was Prestige Elite, Prestige 50, and pull it back, put in a new cartridge, the font you want, and let's have a close look at it. Right, so there you go, let's just set up the new cartridge and There it is, with a smaller font. That's Prestige 15. So there you go, the IBM 6746, a classic of the typewriter, well, the electric typewriter world. And if you enjoy videos like this, then uh, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified of new videos. Also, you can join us on Twitter and our Facebook group. And if you really like our videos, then you can support us 
through Patreon. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>